For this subject of um, sheep in autumn mist, I have taken some reference photos of sheep in the mist for colour guide and also blurring a background. And I've used some drawings of sheep by Charles Tonicliffe to make this composition of a flock of sheep by flipping and reversing and also uh, resizing images. I've also got some reference pictures of trees, bare trees and trees in leaf for autumn foliage. So I'm going to start by wetting the top left corner with the hate brush. So that's wetting but not soaking um, here. I also want to lift out a little bit of these far sheep by pressing down with a piece of blue tack or a putty rubber. Just make those outline edges a little less distinct by taking them back a little bit. You can still do this after watercolour is applied, but it's the watercolour tends to seal the paper, so it gets a little bit harder. So I've made some blue-grey. I'm going to have a look at this top left corner. And I'm going to apply that onto wet as if a fog or a mist. I'm going to stop inside the wetted area with the colour so that it blurs or creates a soft edge which is easier to join onto. And I'm going to come down to right there and just drag or blur that edge. So the effect that I'm looking for is something like a hedge, a series of bushes along here. This is a drier, darker colour going on to a wetted colour. And if I look at Autumn colours would be ochres and reds. So this is a mixture. I'm thinking of a tree here that's turning a little bit. So all the time I'm looking for the gaps in the tree. Central trunk. So we might have glimpses of something a bit darker in there. The idea is that as if that's in a fog or mist and there's a sort of a low hedge behind here. Let's have a look at another tree. Maybe little touches of slightly darker colour. There's a strong element of the random with this in watercolour so it may Blur, it may blur a little out of control. That's all to do with timing. I'm trying to look at the shape of the tree. This is a lower tree. So those have different degrees of blurring. I'm going to wet this edge before it has a chance to dry so that it's possible to join one section onto another. That's just damped really rather than, rather than wetted. And if I start over here with the blue-grey mix, 
paint that in and just lead it over into the previous colour but not across that, just let it blur there. Same here, so I want that to be another lost edge. And let's change the colour of the... So this, the idea would be there's a hedge along the bottom here. Just touch that in a little bit. When you're working back onto a wetter surface, it is possible to add, add colour and information, but the brush must be quite dry to do that, otherwise it tends to create more back runs. Let's just lose that bottom edge there. A bit. Just, just timing is a big part of this, so timing, waiting for the colour to be soaked in. And what would that be like? So if I go up here with a bit of drawing, more of a fan-like structure of tree foliage. On wet. Very dry. Some quick movements of the brush. And avoid overworking uh, this, so it's just left to blur. So, a lot of that is to do with just leaving it alone. Uh, crimson ochre, ultramarine. Different tree. I'm always looking at these bits that are missing, the empty shapes in watercolour. If that starts to dry, I'm going to just damp it off a little bit. I'm going to wet this again. But not soaking wet. And I'm keen to maintain this lost edge along the base here. Just blur that away. So the blue grey over on the right. Paint into this area first. Let the colour spread, diffuse, and then just touch that edge so it just should blur. If that has dried, which that has, then take the corner of the hake and just try and merge those two together so that there's less of a strong line there. So the hedge, or the bushes along the base here, that should extend a little bit further. And separate. We should have waited to that for this to dry off a bit more. Have a look at some other shapes. So there'll be predominantly a kind of rusty red colours in the grass and in the trees. There might be a little bit of green as well in some of the trees.
So generally branches fall to the left and to the right. I'm going to try and make that go a little bit golden. structure into it. So that blurs a bit. Let's go back to an oak tree. The colour will tend to mix with the blue a little bit underneath. I think I'll keep recharging the brush to counteract that. And switch to the darker colour. So these darker colours will just get rid of the excess water on the brush like that. Um, I'll have a look at. So it does become rather blurred and also fades, the colour should fade in intensity. Put one last sparse tree in. So all these will fade as watercolour dries lighter. It's generally better to leave alone uh, to dry fully. You can see the tree that I painted first has dried a lot paler and these ones on the right will also dry paler. I need to wait for this to dry before I can um, alter these back runs, but it is possible to lose back runs with the hate brush, but only when this is dried fully. And then we'll have a look at painting the grasses, which will be influenced by browns and greens. <laughs> 